Dr. Graham Robertson uh, is a uh, professor of political science of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He's also the director of the Center for Slavic, Eurasian, and East European Studies. So you can imagine that with, uh, with this background, we are very fortunate to have him. So thank you so much for um, coming <laughs> virtually, as it happens. We were planning it in, purpose, in, in person, but uh, um, this, this, is the, this is wonderful. So I would like to give you the, uh, the, the, uh, the first. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I wish I could be here in, in, in person, um, uh, but uh, it's nice nonetheless to be able to participate. Um, I have been uh, working on Ukraine uh, for um, uh, about, more, about 10 to 15 years at this point um, and have done uh, survey research mostly in Ukraine and a lot of field work in Ukraine. Um, just before the, the invasion, I was actually working on a project for USAID in, in eastern Ukraine, in, 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 in the Donbass, uh, <clears throat> in southern Ukraine, collecting data on, on identity and, and people's uh, orientations um, towards Ukraine and towards the world outside of Ukraine. Um, and so um, this is a, you know, a, a country and a, and, a, and a region that's very, very, very dear to me. And, and, and um, so it's my pleasure to be able to come and and talk to you a little bit tonight. My brief, as I understand it, is to provide some of the background uh, of, of, of the, the, you know, the run-up to uh, the Russian invasion um, and some of the history. So I will get uh, started with, with that. I want to share some maps with you um, that will help us kind of navigate a little bit of the reminders of the, of the history and, 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 and the, the recent events in the, in the region. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, Go. Um, and hopefully, perfect. All right. So, I wanted to start. I always start with maps. Um, it's very useful to 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 you know, locate ourselves. I'm sure this audience doesn't need to know where Ukraine is uh, on a map, um, but there it is. And, and one of the things I wanted to point out. I use this map to point out is essentially um, how you know, Ukraine is surrounded on one side by Russia and, and Belarus and on the other side by NATO. Um, all of these other countries with the unfortunate exception of Moldova um, are NATO countries. Um, and so this really uh, illustrates the, 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 the clearly unambiguously international dimension to this uh, act of aggression. This is not just an aggression on Ukraine, but it's a, it's a direct threat to the whole of Western Europe. Um, and uh, fortunately, the Europeans seem to have really realized that fairly early on and um, have gotten more engaged in the conflict than some of us feared. They might have done um, based upon the experience of the, of the, the Russian invasion of, of, of 2014. Um, so this is very much your kind of part and, and, and core of the international uh, balance of power, as, as Angelina was mentioning, um, in, in, in Europe. And the resolution, the result of this this, this invasion and how this war ends um, is going to be absolutely critical for restructuring uh, the whole of uh, strategic relations in that in that part of the of, of, of Europe. Um, one thing that I also like to, to 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 talk about is is how contemporary Ukraine uh, compares or looks like uh, in a in a historical perspective. Uh, on this map, you'll see a, a green outline. Uh, in the middle of that is that contemporary Ukraine. Of course, it wasn't always uh, an independent state uh, recognized within its current boundaries. No country in this part of the world uh, was always an independent state recognized within its uh, current boundaries. And so that's, you know, that's just a fact. Um, Ukraine itself was divided historically uh, primarily amongst three or four different empires. Um, the, 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 the Russian Empire, the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, um, and then to a lesser degree, um, the Habsburg Empire in the in, in the West and, and um, the, the the Ottoman Empire uh, under the Crimean Caliph um, in uh, in the south and, and around Crimea itself. Um, this division has been shown by by scholars in various different ways to have created different cultures and, and, and uh, political cultures as well as as well as um, 
uh, linguistic cultures. And, and, and so this is part of the reason why Ukraine, contemporary Ukraine has the wonderful richness uh, and diversity that it does um, to today. When Ukraine became independent uh, uh, in 1992 um, from the Soviet Union, it of course became independent within the boundaries uh, of the of the of the Ukrainian of the of the Soviet Ukrainian Republic, um, which included uh, Crimea down there on the in, in, in the south, um, and all of the, you know, the 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 boundaries that we now recognize uh, as belonging to Ukraine. But this uh, little map shows is the percent of uh, of voters who voted in favor of independence in the referendum in 1991, uh, and what you'll see is a dramatic unity across the entire country, uh, whether in the, in the in the far west or in the north or the south or the, or, or, or in, in, in the Donbas. Um, the Ukrainians voted for independence um, all across the country, um, with you know, overwhelming support. The only places where it was even vaguely close is down in Crimea and and and. And that even there it was a very, very clear mandate for uh, independence for, for Ukraine and uh, part of the, the Soviet state. Um, so Ukraine became independent in a, in a, in a moment of enormous uh, unity. Unfortunately, as is you know, often the case, uh, that unity didn't last particularly long, especially as Ukraine um, entered a period of, of massive economic contraction, um, which characterized the, you know, all, all of the former Soviet states in the in the early 1990s, and by um, the beginning of the 2000s, Ukraine was politically, uh, at least, was clearly divided uh, along its sort of east-north, uh, uh, east-south, sorry, northwest uh, axis. Um, and you see this in election after election. This, this particular map shows voting um, in 2004 for uh, on the one hand Viktor Yushchenko in, in, in orange, appropriately. Uh, and for, for Viktor Yanukovych in, in, in blue. Um, and what we see is you know, very strong support for, for Yushchenko, especially the further west you go in Ukraine, um, and very strong support for Yanukovych in the east, and especially the further east <coughs> that you go, so in, in, uh, in the Donbass uh, region, and of course in, in Donetsk, his home, his home, his home uh, region, uh, you have almost unanimous support for, 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 for Yanukovych. Um, this uh, particular election, as, as, as many of you will, will remember, uh, was contested after the after uh, fraud through the, the overall result in the in in, in favor of, of Yanukovych, um, and we had what, we, what was called at the time the, the Orange Revolution, um, which was a major effort to engage uh, Ukraine's nascent civil society uh, in mobilization. Uh, in favor of um, clean elections um, and against corruption, um, and you know, as a as a result, in favor of of, of, the, of the politician uh, Viktor Yushchenko himself. But it was much more than about Yushchenko; it was really about uh, anti-corruption and and, and and about um, th overthrowing the uh, decrepit political system that Ukraine had developed in the in the in the 1990s. So it was a moment of <clears throat> enormous enthusiasm. Um, but it was also a moment of of, uh, of division too, um, and the support was, as we saw in the, in the electoral map, um, very divided between different parts of, of Ukraine. And so, perhaps unsurprisingly, <clears throat> not long after the Orange Revolution, the pattern of division, of political division in the country, uh, reproduced itself uh, in subsequent elections. And so here we see uh, the elections of, of 2010. Um, in which Yanukovych ran again and again was very popular in the same parts of Ukraine um, that he had been popular in 2004. Um, uh, and in the pink was his support for Yulia Tymoshenko, um, who basically captured the same spaces um, that Yushchenko had done uh, before. And so that division um, of Ukraine politically survived uh, the Orange Revolution and in some ways even deepened, I think, um, uh, over the course of that period, especially. Um, when Yanukovych himself came to power and, 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 and you know, threw Timoshenko in, 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 in prison. Um, <clears throat> so you see this, this, this political division that, that, that's been very hard to, to overcome. Um, and that's really, it's the overcoming of that political division that's the story of the last 10 years in Ukraine um, and the transformation of the country um, that's taken place. So let's I'll talk a little bit about that 
Um, you all know what I'm talking about, of course. I'm talking about the, 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 the Euromaidan or the Revolution of Dignity, um, which took place in, in, in 2014. It uh, was not an electoral revolution, but it was a response to uh, a geopolitical decision on the part of Yanukovych uh, and his administration to turn it back on integration with the European Union um, and to make a decisive gesture towards alliance with, with Russia. Uh, this was obviously you know, unacceptable and to, to many people in Ukraine uh, and sparked protests originating in, in Kiev, but, but ultimately uh, all around the country, including the Nets, um, as uh, citizens of Ukraine and especially the younger citizens of Ukraine pushed back against this um, decision to ally with Russia and to join the, the Eurasian Economic Union instead of uh, support for the, the EU. The revolution, of course, had many different elements. It ended uh, quite violently um, with attacks on the protesters and, 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 and significant fight back from elements in the, in the, in the protest. Um, but ultimately, Yanukovych was overthrown. Um, but one of the few politicians I ever known to be overthrown in two revolutions, not just the one. Uh, and he fled to he fled to to to, to, to Russia. Um, so there was a political revolution that took place. Uh, in, the, uh, in the Maidan, but also around Ukraine uh, in 2014. Um, but it was also a cultural revolution, and it was a very different revolution from the revolution of, uh, from the Orange Revolution of 2004. Um, <clears throat> one thing that made it different was the response um, of Russia, um, which very promptly moved to invade and annex uh, Crimea, and then along with support from uh, local separatists, um, uh, to uh, launch the annexation of uh, much of uh, Donetsk and, and Luhansk Oblast. Um, the response uh, on the Ukrainian side was, was slow initial. Initially, the Ukrainian army was not ready uh, for this, but gradually, um, over time, the uh, forces, sometimes militia forces, and then, then later kind of full on uh, Ukrainian army forces. Um, gathered their strength and were able to, to defend and to push back uh, the Russians into what became a you know a, a, an extremely long and eight-year stalemate um, in um, parts of Donetsk and, 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 and Luhansk. But the other thing that was really different was this was a revolution which in which the revolutionaries came to power with a very clear sense of what they wanted to do. Um, and in particular, there's a famous um, organization called the Reanimation Package of Reforms, which is a sort of platform that brought together many, many different kinds of civil society groups in Ukraine with expertise on things like anti-corruption, with expertise on things like education policy, trade policy, energy policy, all across the board. And they, they, they presented a sort of unified platform of reforms um, that they demanded that, that the, the, the subsequent governments post-revolution would actually uh, implement. And so Ukraine went into um, the period post uh, revolution of dignity was something that very few revolutions have, which is a, one, a clear uh, roadmap for the future that had been agreed across uh, many different groups of society, <clears throat> and two, a very energized civil society that was going to be active in monitoring progress on, on each of these different elements of reform. Um, <clears throat> and Ukraine led the world, basically, in civil society at that. At that point, there, there are no other countries that are emerging from uh, autocracy that had the kind of well-organized civil society um, and engaged civil society that Ukraine had by, by this point. And that's a really um, uh, fascinating and, and important point. And many other countries have learned a lot from the experience of Ukraine um, as, they, as, as they go forward. Um, in addition to the uh, sort of policy reform, uh, part of the of the revolution. We also saw some very significant political changes that took place after afterwards. The first presidential election uh, won by, by Pedro Poroshenko um, actually looked a lot like the old stuff. It looked like, you know, this, this map shows support for Poroshenko in red and, and, and um, the weaker support in, in, in blue. Um, and you see a similar-ish emerging in which support is concentrated uh, in the western part of Ukraine and northern part of Ukraine, and significantly less in the east and the south. Um, but Poroshenko himself you know, was, was soon defeated by, 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 by Vladimir Zelensky, 
um, whose support looks very, very different from anyone who had taken office um, in Ukraine since 1991, essentially. And this map shows the, the, the distribution of Zelensky's uh, support. Um, and what you can see is that it's all across the country. Anything that's green on this map are counties that went for uh, Zelensky in the in the election. Um, and that's uh, that's a really dramatic change in, in, in power. We can talk about why that is. I mean, I think to my mind, it's a lot to do with the role of the revolution in creating the possibility for um, for patriotic uh, Ukrainians to um, uh, also be Russian speakers and, and, and to, and to um, uh, create a political um, uh, pathway for that process. But Zelensky plays an incredibly strong role in unifying the, the country. Um, Zelensky support. This is a, a, a map of Zelensky, a graph story of Zelensky's approval rating. You see, it was very high when he was first elected back in, in, in 2019, and then, of course, like most politicians, it sort of falls over time um, until the, the Russian invasion, when it when, when it soars up to being uh, almost unanimous. Um, but that political support for 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 Zelensky himself is sort of not fully reflective of the significant changes in civil society and identity and attitudes towards Ukraine that took place. What really we saw during the, the, the Revolution of Dignity and its aftermath was a consolidation of Ukrainians around the idea of Ukraine as a state, the idea of Ukraine as an independent state, the idea of Ukraine as a multilingual uh, independent state in which everyone could be uh, a, a patriot. And you see some of this in this very simple question um, that, that, that the Public opinion polls has been asked since 2010. And the question is, to what extent are you willing personally to defend the territorial integrity of Ukraine with weapons? Right. Um, and what you see is that the, the answer to that was pretty low uh, before the uh, Euromaidan. 38% in 2010, 33% in 2012. Uh, it jumped very significantly by 2017 following the, 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 the Euromaidan as there's a um, a, a consolidation of Ukrainian um, independence and a consolidation of, of, of notions of Ukrainian patriotism. That number grows over time um, until October of, of 2020, and then you see this huge jump again um, after after the beginning of the, of the war. And this really reflect, reflects, and I could show you dozens of other um, uh, charts, I'm running out of time, so I won't, but that, that demonstrate the same thing. That's what, really what's happened over the last eight years in Ukraine um, is a a real flourishing of Ukrainian identity, of Ukrainian civic identity in particular, um, and a commitment of Ukrainians of all sorts um, to the defense of their independent uh, state. And so that's the context within which um, Russia and, and, and Putin starts their invasion. I'm gonna leave it there. I look forward to talking more about any of the things that come up from this um, with you all in, in question and answer later. Thank you.